let's see, am I on the right slide? Yeah, right here. Let's apply that to this problem right here. Consider a particle confined to a one-dimensional box, x equals 0 to L, where the potential is 0 inside the box, infinite elsewhere. If the state function is given by this expression right here, where x and L are in nanometers, what's the length of the box, what's the value of the quantum number n? All you have to do is match this with our equation. What's our equation? Psi equals square root of 2 over L psi and pi x over L, right? So what do we have? This thing right here, square root of 2 over L, must be equal to what? 0.49266. So that allows you to solve for L. And so if you've solved for L, okay, what is this uh, 4.1939 over here equal to? That's going to be n pi over L. So you solve for L first, and then you can plug in your L over here, and then you can solve for n. Okay? So you're going to say then, to solve this problem, you're going to say square root of 2 over L equals 0 0.49266. And then once you've solved for your L, then you're going to say the other number, 4.139, is going to be equal to n pi over L. Okay? So, how about this one? What would the plots of these functions look like? Psi versus x. So let's just plot it. What would the plot look like beyond x equals 0 and x equals L? What's our, what's our psi? 0. So psi is going to be 0 at x less than 0, and psi is going to be 0 at x greater than L, right? Oops. Let's do this. And it's inside the box from x equals 0 to x equals L where you get the sine function. Well, uh, for n equals 1, what's our function again? Psi equals square root of 2 over L sine 1 times pi x over L. That's a sine function. It's 0, you know, it's going to be 0 here at x equals 0. And it's going to be 0, so, at x equals L. But what's it going to look like inside? Do you get a full sine wave, half a sine wave? How do you know, how do you determine the wavelength of a sine function? Okay. If you, uh, a good way to remember it is uh, a sine function, a good way to, to express the sine function in terms of its wavelength is to write it as 2 pi x over lambda. You can see if your x here, changes by lambda, your argument, the thing inside, will change by 2 pi. So that's one cycle. So you can see then that your wavelength for your sine function is 1. You can say that 2 pi over lambda must be equal to, in this case, pi over L. Okay. In general, it's going to be equal to n pi over L. It just so happens in this case n is 1. Right? So what's our lambda? Pi cancels out, so that's 2L over N. So for N equals 1, what's our lambda? Okay, when N equals 1, lambda equals 2L. So for N equals 1, what would your sine function look like? Okay, 0 to L. The wavelength is 2L, right? So if this is 2L. Our sine function is going to look like this. Okay. And why am I putting dashed lines, a dashed curve outside x equals L? Because that sine function is only applicable within the box, right? From 0 to L. So that's uh, that's your sine function. What's the magnitude? What's the maximum value for a sine? 
function. Sine goes from plus one to negative one, right? But since we are we're multiplying it by square root of two over l, okay. So if you plot this, if this is your psi right here, what is this value right here? This is going to be equal to square root of two over l. And where does that peak occur? Halfway at l over two. Okay, so psi has a maximum value at L over 2. So that's for n equals 1. What would it be for n equals 2? For n equals 2, what's our lambda going to be? 2L over n. Our lambda is going to be L. So what would our plot look like? From x equals 0 to x equals L, psi would, would be one full sine wave. So it's going to be right. So maximum value is what? Square root of 2 over L. And the minimum in your function occurs at negative square root of 2 over L. So what you have there you say you have one node, okay? A node is where your wave function changes sign. So from positive to negative, so where wave function goes to zero, changes sign, and goes to zero, okay, that's called a node. Okay, the physical significance of a node is what? What's the physical significance of psi itself? Nothing, right? It's psi squared that has physical meaning. But if psi is zero, what is psi squared? Also zero. So if you are at a node, when psi is equal to zero, you are at a node, the probability of finding the particle there is zero. That brings up the question, if there's no way of finding the particle at L over two, how can you cross over from, from the left side of the box to the right side of the box? It's one of those uh, paradoxes, you, might, you could say, you know, and things that don't seem to make sense as far as quantum mechanics is concerned. Okay, but then you have just have to keep realizing that the reason quantum mechanics was invented to begin with was to explain things that didn't make sense. Okay. All right. So what would be n equals three? Lambda is going to be equal to to L over 3. So what's going to be our plot? From 0 to L, I'm going to plot psi from x equals 0 to x equals L. What would it look like? What's 2 thirds of L? So I'm going to divide this into three parts. 2 thirds of L is one full wave, right? So I'm going to have a full sine wave from 0 to L over to 2 L over 3. So this is L over 3, and this is 2 L over 3. And then I can continue my sine wave. So from 2 L over 3 to L, how much of a sine wave would that be? That's half a cycle right there. So that's a plot of psi for n equals 3. And what do you notice here? You have two nodes. This is one pattern you will be observing uh, when you solve the Schrodinger equation for different systems. As you go to, as you go through the series of solutions, generally you'll end up with getting high, more and more nodes. Okay, so and this will be as we'll, we as we'll see later. We, we can also associate this with higher energies. More nodes, you, can, you get higher energies. Yes, in general, if you if in this particular case, if for a given n, the number of nodes is n minus one. 